This is Brian A. here, and I'm at the Open Source Convention here at the Healthcare Track with David Riley, Brian Bellendorf, and Arian Malik of the Office of the National Coordinator, and they're working on the Nationwide Health Information Network. Well, I mean, the two projects that you have here represent two complementary angles on attacking the overall problem, right? The overall problem is not enough doctors using not enough depth of information technology. Um, the Connect project is all about kind of a really deep integration between sophisticated systems to do a lot of semantically meaningful stuff. Uh, and the Anhin Direct project is about very broad based, basic transportation, basic health messaging. Uh, and the two of them are approaching the problem from very complementary sides. And it's, uh, they're the two ways that we're going to really wire up the, the healthcare system in this, in this country. Uh, and I think what we're seeing uh, there in the marketplace is an understanding of these two models, uh, an understanding of the funding available associated with that, but also of the cost savings that can come from adopting standards and common technology and, and open source technology. Well, the requirements actually arose out of the NIN trial implementations, which was a primarily private sector group of companies or entities that were hired uh, through grants to form a cooperative to define a set of service interface specifications and standards. The federal agencies banded together to create a federal health IT consortium and they had one seat as an equal peer to the other 15 organizations at the table during the process of defining those. Um, so feds had to come to a consensus about what their requirements were and they were put into this bigger uh, mix with the private sector entities for uh, health information exchange, security, privacy, all those kinds of requirements. So. It, it actually implements that larger set of requirements and services that were defined through that effort during uh, 2008. And, and that's exactly it. If you look at the universal for health information exchange in this country for physicians, uh, it's the fax machine. Uh, if you order labs, you're going to get your information often clattering off of a printer um, or faxed to you or couriered to you on pieces of paper. And so even physicians that have uh, adopted electronic health records have a problem in that they haven't been able to get to a truly paperless office because so much of the information from referrals, from consults, from discharge summaries from the hospital, et cetera, comes in uh, on pieces of paper. Um, and a big part of what Indirect about is about is uh, giving a universal common transport mechanism to allow all that information to be pushed electronically. The, the, the bigger transformation that we're in right now is from a an episodic care delivery system where you, you have a problem, you go in, you get diagnosed and treated and you leave, to a longitudinal holistic care delivery system where you've got a team of people across multiple care settings who are, who are taking care of you. Um, and if you look at what that team needs to be able to provide effective care, they need to have access to the pertinent information about you. So we need to be able to solve what's my med list, what's your, what's your condition list, your problem list, what allergies do you have? Uh, what labs do you have so that we can make good treatment decisions about you, but then we need intelligence. So we need to have systems that allow for all that data to be looked at for patterns to figure out, okay, we can tell that, you know, and we can help your physician do decision support that says you've got diabetes, your, your A1C has been trending in the wrong direction, um, the medication profile that you're on is suboptimal for your condition, and so here's a recommended treatment plan. So I think a lot of where this is going is to multidisciplinary collaborative care that's informed by intelligence, um, that's, that's based on the data um, about you that's been collected with your, with your, your permission and stored privately and securely uh, to be able to make good decision support uh, and uh, improve the, the treatment quality. Uh, your well, I know in, in the context of the Veeler project, which is a joint project between Department of Defense and the Veterans Administration, uh, and right now they're in operations exchanging data with Kaiser Permanente in San Diego area. Um, their goal is to add additional types of data. So right now we're exchanging a summary of care document that is compliant with the C32 specification that the HITSPE the Health Information Technology Standards Panel had developed when they were doing their harmonization work. Um, both of the agencies that are involved there want to add additional structured data. VA has a goal of wanting everything sent to them in fully structured, fully coded data sets. Uh, it will take a while for all the private sector to get there, but with the work that DOD and VA have been doing over the last decade, 
they already have a substantial amount of structured data that's being exchanged and putting it into the HITSPE compliant formats and beginning to exchange that over the NHIN is really what we're doing. So we're expanding with each six month increment of, of release of software for that project, we're expanding the amount and types of data that are being sent in structured coded form. And so that will continue to occur um, you know, at a, as rapidly as they can get that up and running and, and data out of their systems. The other thing that DOD, or I'm sorry, VA is working on is the idea of being able to capture um, consumer preferences in terms of release of information and, and the way they want to share their information. So we're working on some fairly sophisticated applications right now that will allow consumers to express their preferences. And when they save that, it generates an executable file in Zacamole, which can be enforced in the runtime environment using policy engines and redaction engines. Um, and so that's ongoing work that uh, I think we'll see a substantial increase in functionality in the January timeframe. Um, and that, that's really important to VA to be able to service their customer base. Well, I think open source is a, a large key to driving the adoption of these standards. Um, I think it's the easiest way to go to any vendor and say there's no reason for you not to be uh, uh, NHIN, plugged into NHIN Direct or plugged into the NHIN uh, Exchange backbone and, and build more and more HIEs. Uh, I think uh, we ha we've now spent 15 years understanding the business models around open source software that every company that's in the healthcare space can understand how to make money while still using open source technologies and building products and services on top of that. Um, and you know, we, we waste a significant amount of money in the healthcare system. And the costs are only growing uh, super linearly, you know, well, well, well faster than inflation. And I think open source software is key to cutting cost in that. Not so much from the cost of licensed software, that's just a drop in the bucket. But by driving the adoption of these standards, we can cut medical errors, we can cut uh, duplicated tests, misdiagnoses, we can uh, get faster cycles in the, the whole pace of innovation around uh, health IT. I, I genuinely believe that. And I think we can. there's a very compatible culture between the culture of, of the Hippocratic Oath and the culture of, of diagnosis and, and, and wellness uh, and the culture of technology stewardship in the open source space. So I think there's just a real compatibility there that, that just hasn't been tapped yet.